So on the 17th of January in 1972, someone in a factory in Patterson, New Jersey, packaged up this box. And today is the 17th of January, 2022. So exactly 50 years on to the day, I think it's time to open it and talk a bit about what's inside. So here's the date stamped on the box there. And if I turn it over, you see a few more details that we'll talk about more in a minute. So stuff was in this box is actually quite rare to come across these days. Um, I had to import this from America and paid a bit more than I want to. I seem to say that a lot. Um, and to the average punter, you'd probably just chuck it in the bin. But to me, it's pretty valuable stuff. Actually saying that, on a regular occurrence, they used to actually just literally chuck it out the window. Um, so I think, I think I'm stalling for time now because I don't want to open it. But let's get it done. All right, here we go. I'm in the truth. Did I get conned on eBay? <laughs> oh wow, that really has been sealed for 50 years. It's fused together. <laughs> Trying to be gentle. There we go. And there it is. I wish I could describe the smell to you because it's my favourite smell in the world. It's old people's attics smell. It's fantastic. That was really... They've survived really well. Look at that. It's hardly any like moisture or anything on them. They've been obviously been stored in a good place. So we got ten rolls of this paper tape here, which used to be used with teletypes, and this is what it looks like when it's got the code punched into it. Uh, we'll go into all that in another video. If you look at the box, you'll see that this particular paper tape is uh, 11 sixteenths of an inch wide and has a one inch hole in the middle there and uh, it came from the Ribbon and Ticker Paper Company and I found a cool picture of one of their old delivery cars for comparison here's a one inch tape here uh, you can fit more data on that obviously more holes that you can punch in that and each of these rolls has a thousand inches on it which comes out to just over 25 meters so you get 10 of those together and you've got 254 meters and for comparison, Big Ben, Elizabeth Tower, that is 96 metres. So you can go up and down Big Ben a few times with these if you want to. It's more special about this tape, why it's actually worth me bringing it all the way across from America and 50 years from the past is because it's got long fibres in it and it's actually oiled as well, which increases its durability, it oils its path through the machine and it oils the mechanism of the machine as it goes through it as well. Quite clever. Uh, that's why it's got this greaseproof paper um, packaged on it so that all the oil that's impregnated inside the paper doesn't leach out into the cardboard box. It's rolled on here really tightly and you can hear it. You take it off, it's just normal paper, but bound up pretty tight. So I think we should take a little bit off and see what fun we can have with it. If you've ever worked in a shop, you'll know from till receipts that this little bit of red ink here is just to warn you that you're coming to the end of the roll. All right, so there's our little bit of tape. And now let's go ahead and punch some code on it. And to help us do the punching, we're gonna use this little punch system that I made um, because I do have some control on my spending and I haven't bought myself a proper teletype punch yet. But you know, one day, one day we can dream. Uh, so I made this, which is based on some uh, editing blocks that did exist back when this technology was around uh, for CNC machines and teletypes. Um, a bit like um, you have the little uh, tape splices for magnetic tape. You just put it in here and you can manually punch the code in. The littler holes, that's the clock holes, and the big ones are for the data. Uh, this tape can hold five data holes, which is, ooh, let me think, 32 characters. So I'm going to start with those clock holes and just put that punch in there and punch on through to the other side. You'll see as we keep doing this, 
the desk will be littered with little bits of yellow paper. Um, the proper name for those is Chad. When people are properly punching this, Chad is flying everywhere. It's a nightmare. <laughs> so now I've punched all the holes in this section of the tape, I'm just going to slide it along and it's got a little raised pin there that you can just hook one of the clock holes onto and it'll line it up perfectly for the next set of holes. When teletype code is written out, uh, it's normally written in blocks of five, hence five Rosie. So here's our punch tape and I've done that with the international teletype alphabet. Uh, these are little souvenirs that I got from Bletchley Park, worth a visit. There's our Chad there and you see that you can imagine in an office or a factory how messy that can get. It just so happens that I have a prototype paper tape reader here uh, as you do um, so let's feed it in and see what sound it makes. So here we go I've got it ready to feed in. Uh, watch these lights here they represent what's being read off of the tape here and I've got it plugged into a VCO here, so you'll hear the pitch changing as it senses the data. You ready? Let's switch it on. Isn't that exciting? Obviously, that can get a lot more musical, uh, but just to demonstrate this, that's quite fun. 